hearts are for the blessing now Night is falling and your day is spent All for the blessing now That's all for the blessing now I wrestle with the devil, that's a losing game Run for the blessing now blessing now would you run for the blessing now I'll run for the blessing now run into your fears where every dream has disappeared destiny is waiting here do not be denied but it's all for the blessing, all for the blessing now. I wrestle with the angel, wrestle alone, wait for the blessing now. Tumbling water, gonna make a smooth stone, wait for the blessing now. Would you wait? For the blessing now I Wrestle in the dark when he won't give his name But you know what it is Find it in the beauty of the crucible flame See his face and live Would you see his face? Destiny is waiting here, do not be denied Well it's all for the blessing, all for the blessing now Yes it Welcome to Monocacy Valley Church, the first Sunday of June. Oh my goodness, this year is flying. just flying. <coughs> yes, yes. But our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Amen. Amen. I do want to announce that um, on June 23rd, not only are we going to confirm the students that we have had in our confirmation class since January, but we're going to have the sacrament of baptism as well. So if anyone, we have um, a family, several other people who have already spoken to me, but if anyone is interested in baptism for either uh, yourself or your child, um, please speak to me about it, okay? Because there's some meeting with the elders that need to happen and what have you before the 23rd of June. So today um, and later in our service, as you can see, we will be celebrating um, the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. So if you could please use um, the beginning of this service to um, quiet your minds and your hearts and focus on the gift that Jesus Christ has given us in this supper. So today um, I would like to have us pray together a prayer of confession and it will be up on the screen for you. I believe, there we go. So pray with me, please. God of the lost, we look for you and wonder why we cannot find you. We wander the corridors of power while you are on the sidewalks beside the homeless. We sit at the head tables of the world while you are handing out soup to the hungry at the kitchen's back door. And we applaud those who win the race 
while you are cheering on those in last place. Forgive us, God of new life. Transform our cold hearts into hearts that are melted in service to others. Grant us mercy as you challenge us to think of all those we have ignored. Gift us with your grace to enable us to proclaim Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as the hope, the joy, and the peace this world so desperately needs. Amen. And now hear the words of assurance. It's not money, but our generosity with it. It is not power, but our willingness to humble ourselves. It is not our efforts, but Christ's gift, which transforms us into God's children. It is more than just how we think. It's God's mercy and grace. Our hearts, our lives, our spirits are transfigured and made new. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. And now hear our call to worship, which is taken from 2 Corinthians 5, 16 through 17. 2 Corinthians 5. So from now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, but we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away, and see, everything has become new. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to, God. Thanks be to God. Please stand if you are able and let us sing our praises to God.
Once again, good morning and welcome to worship at Monocacy Valley Church. Today we are celebrating the sacrament of the Lord's Supper. If you're part of our YouTube congregation, this would be a good time to pause the video and prepare your communion elements for later in worship. If you're here in the sanctuary, please join us for coffee and fellowship in the cafe immediately after worship. Also today after worship, the confirmation class will be meeting. Lots of activity going on in June. The Promising Horizons Learning Center graduation ceremony will take place on Friday morning, June the 14th. The Women's Bible Study will meet via Zoom on June 20th at 7 p.m. If you would like to participate, please speak with Nancy Nathanson. 
On Sunday, June the 23rd, the confirmation class will publicly affirm their faith. Also, Pastor Susan will be administering the sacrament of baptism. The next Saturday brunch and Bible study will happen on July the 7th at 10 a.m. And please remember your contributions to the Frederick Food Bank that you can leave out in the trunk by the front door of the church. Food banks reach critical lows in the summer months when schools are closed and not available to serve meals to children. We welcome your contributions to MVC via our tithe.ly online giving site. And especially for the members of our YouTube congregation, once you have an account on Tithe.ly, you can give safely and securely. And now let's continue worship as we receive our tithes and offerings. This is my revelation, Christ Jesus crucified. Salvation through repentance at the cross on which he died. Now hear my absolution, forgiveness for my sin. I seek beneath the waters that Christ was buried in. And I will rise, I will rise, as Christ was raised to life. Now in Him, now in Him. creation baptized in blood and fire no fear of condemnation by faith I'm justified as you are risen declare your rule and reign my life confess your lordship and glorify your name your word it stands eternal your kingdom knows no end your praise goes on forever and on and on again no power can stand against you no curse assault your throne no one can steal your glory for it is yours alone no stand to stand your praises i stand to testify for i was dead in my sin but now i rise and i will rise as christ was raised to life now in him and now in him I live. 
Yes, I will rise. I will rise. As Christ was raised to life, and now in Him, now in Him, I live. Yes, I will rise. I will rise. As Christ was raised to life, now. Please pray our congregational prayer with me or bow in prayer with me this morning. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of life. We sometimes feel that our days are filled with difficult tasks, challenges, but we are grateful that we can face these hardships with the gift of your Son who forgives and saves and with the gift of the Holy Spirit who understands and walks alongside. God of mercy, lead us through the inevitable trials of life. Be with us in the suffering, the sorrow, the struggle, the pain. Be with us in the tired times and in the dark places. Be with those who weep, who cannot sleep, who have no peace, who seek release. Even today, our prayer list contains the names of those who are facing medical tests or surgery, those who will rely on the wisdom of doctors to advise them of their next step. We also pray for those who are suffering from life-threatening illnesses, and those who are mourning the loss of loved ones. Be with Carol, Marie, Esther, and Michael, and just this morning we heard of James, who is dealing with cancer. Be with them all, Lord, and comfort them and reassure them. Father God, leave us, lead us all with grace, with love, with mercy. Fill us with hope, with patience, and with the stamina that gives us endurance. Transform us in your image, in your Son, in your name. Transform us to grow, to see, to understand. Transform us so that we can be made whole. And in wholeness, may we become the hands and the heart of Christ. Amen and amen. The children can be dismissed to go with Miss Gabby this morning. And we've got some extra good treats out there this morning for fellowship hour, so hope to see you back for those. And this morning, we welcome Pastor Bob. Thank you, good morning. Good morning. I share with you the reading from John 3. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. And he came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. And no one can do the things that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown up? 
Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? But Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and of the Spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Here ends her reading. As I was explaining to the good pastor here, um, during summer I often wear scrubs, and there's a reason for that. Um, I've been chaplain for many years at medical facilities, um, but two years ago I got um, Lyme disease, and I have what they call long-term Lyme disease. And uh, during this hot summer, it is unbearable for me because the end result is it, it affects my um, body temperature and my blood pressure. So um, these are doctor's orders. I hope you don't mind. Um, but uh, um, I find them um, to be every day. It's, you know, sometimes as a church leader, I had to put on all kinds of garb. You know, uh, I, I would wear the clerics and the robes, and I had fancy stoles, color-coordinated for the seasons, and, you know, a beautiful pectoral cross. And, you know, I had everything. But, you know, when I read the scriptures, it wasn't that people all dressed up for church, but meeting everyday people where they were at. And that's what I love about the spirit of this congregation. Um, but if anyone wants to borrow some of my old clothes, let me know. Um, <laughs> Today, we're continuing this series that we're looking at key characters of the New Testament. And, and herein is not only what I call one of my favorite gospels, but a real powerful story. Um, and that's the story of Nicodemus. Um, in, in my ministry, I've been privileged to minister to lots of people, um, specializing in helping churches tra transition um, I've, I've met people of all walks of life, but I've, I've met some people who are really powerful and highfalutin and very influential, and I've been there for them as a pastor. And I have to tell you, the higher you rise in society, the lonelier it gets. <laughs> and, and what I have found is um, so many people that I've worked with have like a darkness in their life. They're missing something. Um, and, and, you know, there's studies that have shown all this, but here is an exception to the rule. Because here we hear about someone who has it all. Nicodemus. He is a member of the Sanhedrin. Now, in Israel, the Sanhedrin was the Council of Seventy that was in charge of everything. To be a member of the Sanhedrin was like being a cardinal, because you were a top religious authority. Like being a federal judge, you could make judgments regarding the law. And to be someone who um, was like a senator who made the laws. So not only were you making the laws, you were enforcing them, both religiously and secular. It was, well, a conflicted position, you know. We, in this country, have a balance of different powers. They didn't have it there. And the thing is, the Nicodemus family was famous. We have records going back hundreds of years about the Nicodemus family because often members of the Nicodemus family were like Secretary of State for Israel. They were that trusted so that at one point, uh, decades before, when negotiations with Rome were going on, it was a Nicodemus, probably his father or grandfather, who had um, negotiated the terms. So he is a high-functioning member of this council, and word's getting out about Jesus. If you look at the Gospel of John, it begins you know, telling the background of Jesus, that Jesus was even there from the beginning of creation, and it moves into, of course, the baptism. But immediately afterwards, you have Jesus calling the disciples. 
And of course, he only looked for disciples who were four-year graduates of Protestant seminaries. Correct. Correct. No. It was everyday people. It, you know, yes, there were some who were disciples of John the Baptist that they were speaking, but it also included fishermen. You know, people who worked with their hands were part of the earth. He was open to anyone who was seeking a different pathway. And they followed. He would call them to follow. He took everyday people and he made them special. And I think that's why the first miracle in the Gospel of John is so important, which was the wedding at Cana, where he took something very common, water, and made it something very special. And is that not what Jesus does with each and every one of us? Takes us, common parts of this earth, but it is through the transformation that comes only from God that we become the best wine ever. I don't mean for you to be inebriated on Sunday morning. I'm, I'm just talking about you are some of the greatest gifts on this planet because the love of God that is able to flow through you as one of his followers. He has this dialogue that goes on with Nicodemus and, and there, there's this kind of question Nicodemus has, how do I get eternal life? And for so many years I thought that was just talking about heaven. What can I do now to guarantee that I have a really nice condominium in heaven? Or if I work hard enough and I'm good, maybe I'll get an upgrade. You know, a place up in heaven with a view. That's not exactly what's going on here. In fact, the words here, yes, do pertain a bit to the future, but they also pertain to the present. The words used here for eternal life mean to have a quality life here and now. And I bet that Nicodemus would not have snuck in the middle of the night, at midnight, to see Jesus and put his own reputation. After all, he was a member of the Sanhedrin, the high and powerful. What is he doing mixing with Jesus, who was a threat to the leadership? Because it's in the second chapter of John that Jesus walks in the temple and he says, no more. You have made an unholy alliance with the government. Because what was happening is there was this big space, probably the size of this sanctuary beyond, that was set aside for Bible study and learning about the faith. And they had filled it with merchants to collect money to pay debt for the Romans. And the church leaders had this unholy bargain with the political powers of its day. And there was no room for God in that room. It was all transactional. And Jesus cast the money changers out and said there has to be a sanctuary here, a holy place where people can gather together, they can learn about God, they can share them, they can grow together in the faith. I think that is a contributing factor to why Nicodemus showed up that night because in the Gospel of John, this happens right afterwards because he probably was unsettled what was going on himself. And, and there's this whole thing of being born again. Maybe you've heard that. You know, I served um, in the military during the Vietnam War, and people often ask me, did you serve overseas? And I said, yes, two years in Texas. Um, now, my father and grandfather were from Texas, so I think I'm allowed to say that. But Texas is a different state. You know, it's just different. And I'm a Yankee boy. I was raised in the Midwest, but when I got down to Texas, I don't think there was a week that went by when someone came up and said, Bob, are you born again? And they would invite me to services and an opportunity to be born again. And for me as a Protestant, I would often reply, well, actually, I'm born again each and every morning. It doesn't have to be any one date, but the date that I look to is my baptism because I was born into the family of God. And I don't mean to diss anyone else's approach. It's just very comfortable for me. 
as some of you know, I'm a Lutheran who snuck in here, but one thing, you know, and, and, and I appreciate your tolerance, but there's one thing Luther would do. Every morning when he would wake up, he'd look himself in the mirror and he'd remind himself of his baptism. That was the starting point of each day. And he'd say a prayer and he'd say, he'd say, God, this is your day. What should we do with it? From the very get-go, he would look to God for direction that day. I think that's the kind of direction Nicodemus was looking for. Is, is not only to find that meaningful, fulfilled life, but also to draw into a community that is meaningful. I suspect that the people he was hanging with in the Sanhedrin, well, they were basically about the three temptations Christ had. Power, possessions, fame. You know, those three temptations that faced Christ, those that were in the power structures didn't want to give up power or their possessions. They, they lived a pretty rich lifestyle. Or, you know, the fame that everybody would worship the ground they worked on, what, worshiped what they walked on. But Zac, 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 today's lesson is something different. Because remember how I said that his family were ambassadors? It may surprise you to find out that the word ambassador is a Celtic word. I'm just saying. But it meant someone who could go to others and learn from them and engage. I think what we hear in today's lesson is an example for what we need in today's world. It's to find those contexts that we can truly listen to one another. Through media, through politics, through other agenda going on out there, we become siloed. And we stop meeting and earnestly talking. And, and the talking it shouldn't be about theology or um, as much as just getting to know each other and care for each other as human beings. That's the starting point. That's what Jesus started here in the middle of the night. And I think that's a call for all of us to look for those opportunities. And did it make a difference? Well, yeah. We understand later on in the book of Acts and beyond that Nicodemus became a key leader in the early Christian church. But most importantly, when Jesus was brought up before the Sanhedrin, Nicodemus was one of those who objected to the kangaroo court that was going on. Furthermore, you read in the Gospels that when Jesus was crucified, it was Nicodemus who helped provide a space so that he could be buried and cared for with dignity. I think a powerful change came about him that day. I, I don't really go in for cliffhangers so much, but I have to do it this time because this story is part of a two-part series. Chapter 3 and chapter 4 are companions. And I can't talk to you about chapter 4 now. You're going to have to come back next week and be worrying about chapter 4 all week long. But I just want to point out how chapter 3 happens at midnight in John, and chapter 4 happens at high noon. Chapter 3 is about a man who does not get it. Chapter 4 is about a woman who gets it right away. But we'll have to wait to learn more about that lesson. But for them, for us, for us as individuals, but more importantly, collectively as a community, I think the model is that we come together and that we open ourselves to that being born from above, the specific word born from above here is reflective of the word agape. It is in this particular chapter we have, and I'm sure you know it, for God so loved the world that what?
Okay, you're familiar. Actually, it is the most looked up verse on Google in the world. A few million times a month. Probably because you see it at baseball games and all that. But, you know, I'm sorry, I gotta do this again. Martin Luther called it the miniature gospel. The gospel in one sentence. But in it, that love, the word love he talks about is agape love. Now, I have deep love for my wife. We've been together 45 years. For my daughter, for my grandchildren who live in Myersville. Boy, do I have love. Boy, do I spoil them. I mean, it's just my definition of love. But, but this is a different type of love. This is a love, agape love, is what might be best translated as heavenly love. It's a love from above. It's a type of love that we cannot accomplish on our own. It's as if the hand of God has to reach in and help pull us up. But here's the interesting thing. What Nicodemus discovered is it's a love we can never find all on our own. We must get together with others for that love to really be expressed. That we lift each other up. That's the lesson, the takeaway. What Nicodemus discovered that day. Here he was in charge of all religious power in Israel. And yet he had so little. But his life changed simply because he asked. He sought out an answer. He looked for a meaningful life, not just in the future, but in the here and now. Let that love of God come into each and every one of our lives, each and every day. As we celebrate our baptism, which pulls us into a community of faith, brothers and sisters, by virtue of our baptism, that we are all of the same family around the world. And also a love that encourages us to go out and share that love in word and deed. Amen. And today, we have the opportunity to share the agape love that Pastor Bob was talking about through the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, which was given to us as a gift from Christ our Lord. So hear now the meaning of the sacrament. Beloved in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Supper, which we are about to celebrate, is a feast of remembrance, of communion, and of hope. We come in remembrance that our Lord Jesus Christ was sent to the Father into the world to assume our flesh and blood and to fulfill for us all obedience to the divine law, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross. By his death, resurrection, and ascension, he established a new and eternal covenant of grace and reconciliation, that we might be accepted of God and never be forsaken by him. We come to have communion with this same Christ who has promised to be with us always, even to the end of the world. In the breaking of the bread, he makes himself known to us as the true heavenly bread that strengthens us unto eternal life. And in the cup of blessing, he comes to us as the vine in whom we must abide if we are to bear fruit. And we come in hope for the future, believing that this bread and this cup are a pledge and a foretaste of the feast of love of which we shall all partake when his kingdom has fully come. When with unveiled face we shall behold him made like unto him in his glory. Since by his death, resurrection, and ascension, Christ has obtained for us the life-giving spirit who unites us all in one body. So are we to receive this supper in true love, mindful of the communion of the saints. Now hear the words of the institution. Now the Lord Jesus, 
on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after they had eaten, he took the cup and said, this is the covenant, the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you remember me. Today we have bread on this side and we have gluten-free wafers on this side. For all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, this is a table that is open to all. Please come forward, take a cup of juice and one a piece of bread back to your seat and we will partake together. Come now, for all things are ready. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. Eat ye all of it. And the cup of blessing which we bless is the communion of the blood of Christ. Please pray with me. We thank you, Lord, that since you have now fed us at your table, we ask that your body and your blood nourish us today and that we may hunger and thirst for this holy food until our life's end. Amen and amen. Please stand for our closing song today.
Christ alone my hope is found he is my light my strength my song this cornerstone this solid ground firm to the fiercest drought and storm what heights of love what depths of peace when fears are stilled when striving cease my comforter my all in all here in the love of christ i stand gathered here today in agape love, the type of love that only comes from above and flows through us out to others, to the entire world. Let that love fill your heart and life every day in your walk with Jesus and with each other. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. No guilt in life, no fear in death. This is the power of Christ in me. From life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny. No power of all, no scheme of man can Till he returns or calls me home, here in the power of Christ I'll stand. Till he returns or calls me home.
here in the power 